What is going on guys? Ben Glegan here coming back at you with another video. And this will be one of my last post -comed Madden 19 rebuilds. Of course, this is from when I was down in EA. Thank you again to EA for flying me down to Orlando to record some of this early. Obviously, as you're watching this now, it is not technically early. It's still in the EA access, so you could play it with Xbox if you wanted to. So, sorry for the no face cam if that's what you're into. Uh, I know, I mean, you gotta love looking at me, right? Apparently. Um, if you have never seen a video of mine on the channel before and you're first stumbling upon it, it's gonna be a fun little mystery as to what I look like for, uh, you know, until you, you watch another video of mine that probably has face cam. And if you never watch another video of mine, one, I'm gonna be sad. And two, um... It'll be less of a fun mystery for me personally. Saquon Barkley in game when I recorded this did not have a face scan. He has one now. So if that's a big issue for you, not to worry. It has actually in the game now. But I am going to be rebuilding the New York Giants today. Enough waffling to start the video. This is an interesting team and it happens to be my favorite team. So it's a little bit annoying that I can't do live com. I think those videos turn out a lot better, funnier, more fun. But we are doing a post com, so we're going to be down to business. All right, so it's no secret the Giants didn't have a phenomenal year last year. They had a clown of a head coach in Ben Crapadoo. Ben McAdoo is a particularly fun one. The offense didn't click. They had no offensive line. They had no running back. Odell Beckham Jr. was injured for almost the entire year. Sterling Shepard was out a lot of the year. They were dealing with so many injuries, but they did have a you know, somewhat of a bright spot at tight end in the rookie Evan Ingram. Did he drop a couple of passes? Sure. Are we trading Eric Flowers because he's a trash player? You bet your ass. Eric Flowers, a second this year and next year for a first rounder from the New York Jets. These are going to be a little bit less realistic than the realistic rebuilds that we get to as we also send the trash bag that is Eli Apple away from the Big Apple and we send him to the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, enjoy Indianapolis. Enjoy Indiana, Eli. Um, really couldn't stand Eric Flowers or Eli Apple. I had to get them both off the team. So, if you guys are new to the channel, you don't really know about rebuilds. The fantasy style rebuilds, which is, you know, we're going to do probably 32 of these. 32 realistic style. Um, there's not really a whole lot of gameplay involved, if any at all. If you would actually like to see Giants gameplay, Giants franchise, that's an entirely different series going on on my channel. So... I will have a card to that, hopefully, in the top right of your screen right now. So if you're interested in watching a lot of Giants franchise gameplay, more realistic and, you know, actual seeing the players play, as we do manage to re-sign Odell Beckham Jr. and negotiate with Landon Collins, a former Alabama safety, who uh, was terrible at free safety, but has really found something, a strong safety for the Giants over these past couple of years. Fantastic guy, had to re-sign him, so we do just that. Team is not exactly coming along nicely, but that's why we have to look forward to free agency. And that's pretty much what's going to come up next. As you can see, 1-7 in seven is really not what we wanted here at the midseason mark. It just isn't. With the skill points, we're in an okay position. Saquon Barkley is going to improve, but we're going to save that for the offseason as we're just pretty much in tank mode as we simulate to the playoffs. And the shock of the century, we do not make the playoffs. However... We win four more games than we won in the entire first half. Five times as many games in the entire first half. We finish 5-11. and 11. If you flip that around, we probably would have had a good shot for the playoffs. But unfortunately, it did not happen to work out that way. Eli Manning, it looks like a pretty Eli season. About 4,000 yards, 29 touchdowns, not an insane amount. 10 interceptions. Maybe that's a little bit generous for Eli. He'll probably throw more like... Uh, 14 to 20 in that range as Saquon Barkley led our team in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns with six, 823. We got to improve the offensive line. He only averaged 3.4, 3.5 yards per carry as Odell um, didn't manage to quite get 1,000 yards, but he did get six touchdowns, but Sterling Shepard really stole the show. 69 receptions, nice. 910 yards, eight touchdowns. Roger Lewis Jr. had five touchdowns, just one shy of Odell Beckham Jr., Saquon was a force in the receiving game as well. And as far as the offensive line goes, things weren't terrible per se. 
as BJ Goodson and Alec Ogletree lead our team in tackles. Tackles for loss was 12 from Damon Harrison, 11 from Dalvin Tomlinson. Quarterback sacks, 9.5 from the nose tackle Damon Harrison. Olivier Vernon had a few too. And interceptions, I mean, William Gay had three. Landon Collins had three. Not much else happened. Landon Collins forced four fumbles. That was pretty nice. And as far as defensive touchdowns go, uh, we can't score on offense or defense, apparently. But we will check out the yearly awards to find out that Carson Wentz and the 13-3 Eagles managed to secure the MVP. Surprise, surprise. No Giants involved in the MVP race as Carson Wentz wins NFC Offensive Player of the Year. No Giants in there either. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Bobby Wagner. And again, another shock. Nobody in there. But Saquon Barkley does win Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's going to be good for skill points. You know, XP to get those uh, gain and get those skill points. As he has eight. We do play with the XP sliders at about 150. I'm going to make a settings video at some point. If you guys want to see that soon, let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you are new, by the way. And even if you've been around, might as well hit the like button. Get this video doing a little bit better. But Saquon Barkley in these XP sliders, at, I think about 150 to 200 for the running back. Again, I will make that video at some point. Uh, but he does have a lot of skill points. And if you guys are unfamiliar with the upgrading system, about one skill point equals somewhere around one overall. Sometimes you don't exactly get it. Sometimes you might even get a plus two. But with four skill points remaining, we're going to be able to get him right around that 90 mark. And if he doesn't get it here, he's certainly going to be getting it within this next season at some point because he's an incredible talent. We're upgrading him. We're increasing a lot of these different areas. And we're just making him more complete and he's a fantastic running back the only things you really look for him to uh, really develop in game would be ball carrier vision and awareness the rest he's strong he's fast he's agile he can catch he really is the complete running back and if you're going to choose a running back as highly as Saquon Barkley was drafted by the New York Giants you're going to take someone of that caliber someone who can really do it all at running back but the confidence of the team is low they didn't love winning fewer than six games we are going to upgrade Odell Beckham Jr. as well. Get him even higher of an overall. He was 95, 96. Now he's up to a 97. And with another upgrade, he could be even be looking at a 98 overall. We're going to go ahead and upgrade possession here. It doesn't impact it, unfortunately. It doesn't really matter. The overall is just there for appearance. We want the, the attributes anyway. We don't really care what the overall happens to say. But you see, Will Hernandez is up a little bit. Nate Solder, unfortunately, is regressing as he is past 30, and that's kind of when it starts to hit, it seems, in Madden 19 opposed to 18. We're going to advance to the offseason, though. We do have a lot of work to do. We had a lot of work. As far as free agents go, Danny Shelton is one that we could look to target. Trevor Williams would be a great cornerback. The cornerback is fairly, fairly weak. We have Janoris Jenkins, and then it drops off to Jalen Myrick on the team. So we would go after Trevor Williams, Try to get him a little bit of money and see if maybe he would sign with Big Blue. Become a G-man, if you will. Join the G-men. I felt so corny. I don't know if I've ever heard anyone say G-man before. Not really a fan, I'm going to be honest. But Trevor Williams rejects. What the hell, Trevor? Trent Brown rejects. Bradley Roby happens to accept as Dante Fowler Jr. also declined. No one wants to become a New York football giant. <laughs> You could say this is a giant failure. <laughs> Excuse me. In all seriousness, though, Bradley Roby actually helps out our team quite a bit. The cornerback group was fairly weak, and Bradley Roby's going to slot in with the rest of our colored hair uh, secondary, of course. Landon Collins has the red. Janoris Jenkins has his tips bleached on uh, his dreadlocks, and... Uh, Bradley Roby, I think he does something with his dreads as well, in, as you can see by the picture. But we're in the draft. Tampa Bay holds the number one overall pick, but we do not pick much later after that. Third and fourth back-to-back -back picks, one from the Jets, and of course one was our own. But we are going to be selecting here at number one overall. You look at a couple of these players. Are we leaning quarterback? Here's Casey Flannery out of Alabama. We also have Carter Schroeder. Out of the U. Which quarterback do we go with? Do we want the SEC guy? Do we want the ACC guy? We're going to lean towards Casey Flannery and select him. He's only a 78 overall. Ranked number 35 in the class. 
it says we drafted him at number one. That is a glitch, of course. We did not, but he does have superstar development. So he's going to be gaining XP at the fastest possible rate in the entire game. And then we're going to fire back here at pick number four, and we will eventually take Asa Hart. Ranked number 10 in the class. We took him, of course, at four, and he's got star development. 81 overall is a pretty high overall already. He specializes in pass coverage, but he has really good speed as well. He was pretty much the complete middle linebacker. And if you think about some of these past Giants teams, where do they really, really lack? And that's at the linebacker level of the field, that second level of the defense. And, you know, maybe you talk about the second level being the secondary, but in a 3-4, when you have the outside linebackers dragged down and then you have the nose tackle and the interior defensive ends, those linebackers really have to play a little bit more off the ball. And they're going to be at that second level before you get to the last level, which is the secondary. We need linebackers to step up and play. And the Giants really have not had that. You want to go back to the best linebacker that the Giants have had in the past decade or more? And that's Antonio Pierce. And I think the last year he might have played with the Giants was about 2009. But we're going to keep drafting here as the offensive line continues to improve with the addition of Joshua Bush. And that addition is one that we look very forward to, very much forward, because that means replacing guys in the past like John Jerry, as you can see him now second on the depth chart. And uh, we also drafted a player named Xavius Joseph out of Rice, Rice University, uh, Texas school. Not huge for football, but Xavius Joseph looks pretty huge. Looks pretty good. We're going to change him over to right tackle so he fits there just a little bit better in our depth chart in case things get, you know, auto reordered by the CPU. Don't really want that to happen. But we're going to simulate through the regular season up to the midseason mark and see how we're doing as we have a few new guys to resign. Some interesting ones as well. Sterling Shepard. Three-year player going into his fourth out of Oklahoma in this particular franchise. We're going to go ahead and re-sign him, and he accepts. He offers, uh, excuse me, he accepts our offer, which is a pretty decent deal. He's getting over $6 million per year, but he can be one of those elite slot receivers in the NFL. Unfortunately, that last offseason did not translate to new success for your Giants, all right? We went 1-7. But we would advance to the playoffs where things really should start to heat up for us. Is obviously we're going to make it after that 1-7 and seven start, right? <laughs> for sure. We didn't quite make the playoffs. The interesting thing, though, is that once again, this team performed admirably in the second half. We finished at 7-9. and nine. So, we're showing improvement, kind of. We're just a second half team. If we got off to a hot start, we're going to be in business. So Casey Flannery, we are upgrading. He is almost up to a 90 overall as well. Only two skill points remaining, but that's going to get him up to an 87 overall. But this team in the first one had quintuple the amount of wins in the second half as the first. And now we have what? Was it sextuple? I'm not really sure. That sounds that sounds like it could be a little bit, little bit risky for a little bit of demonetization action. But Asa Hart... He's going to get upgraded even more with these skill points. He's going to be looking near that 87 overall as well as we upgrade these different type of archetypes here. If you guys are unfamiliar with that, you're going to learn over the course of this next year in Madden 19. It's a pretty cool system. We'll see what they end up doing in Madden 20 if they keep it or if they, you know, change it, alter it somehow. But Ace of Heart up to an 86 overall. That star development is extremely helpful. And you can see his stats. 85 speed at the middle linebacker position is quite helpful. His coverage is good. We're going to end up boosting that tackle, that block shed. And we're going to really make him that complete middle linebacker to really be the forefront and the leader of our defense. But once again, we're going to hop into free agency here after some re-signing periods. We have a couple of interesting players to choose from. Darian Thompson has star development. I'm going to be honest, it seems generous considering that Landon Collins only has quick for whatever reason. Now, it has changed from years past. Slow is the new normal. Normal uh, went to quick. Quick went to star. And then star went to superstar, if you will. Our superstar was always there. It just, you, know, you followed the, the thing. But Nelson Aguilar is a free agent and a 95 overall, as is Kenny Clark. We also have, I believe that's Kendall Fuller, not Kyle down there, but we're going to find out 
that answer in just a moment but we would be very excited about the opportunity to sign Kenny Clark potentially play him at left end and it is Kendall Fuller Derek Henry is there as well Jalen Mills Michael Brockers would fit our 3-4 defense we have a number of guys that we could play that really that would fit into our team and Jalen Mills of course the green goblin has the green hair we're gonna steal him from Philadelphia if we can Matt Ioannidis is another guy we could potentially target here we go simulating Kenny Clark rejects but guess what we're gonna steal a Philadelphia Eagle and a pretty young and pretty talented one at that in Jalen Mills adding to that secondary with different coloring in their hair Jalen Mills of course very noticeable especially in game with uh with the green hair on top looks pretty cool what would be awesome though is if it would change to blue or change to the team's main color as you sign them now is that necessarily the most realistic thing that they could implement uh almost certainly not but regardless talking about Jalen mills hair color we're gonna move on to the nfl draft still maybe looking at cornerback charles favors looks like he could do us a favor <laughs> and play on our team i don't know why i keep doing it. They, they're, they're bad jokes but that's the whole point but i, I don't know if, if anyone's gonna get that charles favors 93 speed 82 man 86 zone coverage 83 press he looks pretty good 89 agility too maybe we even have him returning kicks but we're here in the third round after sacrificing our second in a trade that got us that jets pick and jordan gabriel would be the selection of course it says reach it is not he's a third round pick ranked number 18 in the entire class out of louisville six foot five 314 pounds 79 overall and boy is he strong boy can he run block 87 strength i believe that was 85 run blocking we have a very very good player to work with there we're in round five now and then this fifth round we're just kind of looking anything we can get anyone that can provide value to our team we're going to take them and that happened to be andre mcpherson here out of central michigan i know uh i know for a fact oh, did antonio brown or did he go to western michigan i think he went to central i think antonio brown went to central michigan but now i'm second guessing myself because of course i think uh corey davis the titans wide receiver and their first round draft pick i guess a year ago at this point i believe he went to western michigan i, I feel like antonio brown was central definitely a michigan school i know for a fact and uh i'm actually stalling for time so i can look it up on my phone here and antonio brown did indeed go to central michigan good on me all right a lot of michigan schools there it's kind of weird you got michigan state central michigan western michigan uh michigan of course how could you forget so i guess that's not a ton but whatever we're trying to make a huge trade here Jor uh, janoris jenkins he's going down in overall he's regressing his cap hit is gigantic azavius joseph is a guy who has value we're trading a first round pick for malik hooker we do have darian thompson but malik hooker is at that next level he could be a future earl thomas caliber player now we're in a position where we can trade darian thompson we no longer need him we're going to add in a second round pick next year and a fourth for deforest buckner one of the best interior defensive linemen in the nfl he's super young and he's been added to our team big fan of that love deforest buckner love what he brings to our team more so than that we're going to upgrade him with that skill point that he had waiting for us after trading for him and we're going to go ahead and edit him and we're going to change him to a defensive end so he fits our scheme a little bit better of course in this 3-4 defensive scheme DeForest Buckner will play defensive end with Damon Harrison as that nose tackle so the reason I traded Janoris Jenkins I think it's pretty obvious we have Bradley Roby we have Jalen Mills there are already higher overalls in Janoris Jenkins we drafted Charles Favors to add to that secondary we have three solid cornerbacks Janoris Jenkins really doesn't do much for us Jalen Myrick is a fine four and that defensive line needed improvement so we use basically Darian Thompson to get the Forrest Buckner but we didn't need him anymore after we traded for Malik Hooker he's just a huge step over Darian Thompson in terms of ability and potential I really could not pass up that potential opportunity I had to I hope you guys understand maybe we got some huge Boise State Darian Thompson fans in the comments section and I do like his potential but Darian Thompson doesn't make us 7-0 like we are right now Malik Hooker intercepting balls over the top does exactly that when he's healthy he is a very good looking player and we added him to the squad we had to it improved the team so much love Malik Cooker and we got to re-sign him now that's a huge reason why they would have made that trade is Malik Cooker 
is going into his final year. They want to get value out of him if they don't think they can re-sign him. So we would do exactly that. We would also re-sign Damon Harrison as well. He is 31, but he's not really regressing too much. Evan Ingram, also a free agent. We got to bring him back. We got to re-sign him. Get him off his rookie deal. We're going to sign him to a five-year extension. Over $5 million per year. It's a pretty big deal for a tight end. But Evan Ingram, while he can't exactly block as well as we might like, he can do everything else pretty well. Dalvin Tomlinson coming off a fantastic rookie year in, in real life. One of the most underrated players in the NFL, in my opinion. He's going to fit that 3-4 defense really well. Was a really talented player at Alabama. He slots into our team, and we got to re-sign him. We got to bring back the talented players that we do have. Olivier Vernon's another interesting one. He is 29. The most I would give him here was a four-year deal. He does end up returning. We get him off his horrific contract. We pay him a little bit less, but we would simulate to the playoffs. 7-0. Can we go undefeated into the playoffs? No, we cannot, but we do end up going 14-2. 14-2 is a much better record than some of the previous seasons, and it's led by Casey Flannery. Has a very similar year to the one that Eli had in year one. That's probably a product of the scheme. But I'll tell you who didn't have a similar year. And that is Saquon Barkley. 1,300 yards, 11 touchdowns. Odell has a great season. 92 catches, almost 1,200 yards. He was in that double-digit touchdown range. Sacks allowed is way down from any previous season that we had seen. Asa Hart leading our team in tackles with 112. Alec Ogletree had 111 as well. Tackles for loss, you know, 10 from DeForest Buckner. Quarterback sacks, 14 and a half. From DeForest Buckner at left end, Olivier Vernon had nine. Interceptions, those are up a little bit. Landon Collins had four. Jalen Mills had four. Bradley Roby, Charles Favors, both with three. Forced fumbles. Landon Collins still leading our team in forced fumbles with three. I need Asa Hart to be up there. But Landon Collins and Alec Ogletree both tie for fumble recoveries. And of course, no defensive touchdowns. We're just not that style of team that makes that big, exciting play. Which, you know, is fine as Kareem Hunt and the 10-6... and six Kansas City Chiefs wins the MVP. I'm speechless. Over over either Saquon Barkley or Casey Flannery of the 14-2 best record in the entire NFL New York Giants. It's absolutely ridiculous. As we do have a couple of Cowboys in there for defensive rookie of the year before our Giant. Not exactly what you like to see, but it doesn't particularly matter. It's, it's a meaningless race for us at this point as rookies. They're developing just fine. We have a divisional playoff matchup against the New Orleans Saints, though. But more importantly, boy, do we have some skill points to spend. And the skill point system has changed a little bit from the build that I played. This was back in um, early July, I believe. So things have changed a little bit. So if you guys see inconsistencies, that is potentially why. I have upgraded the entire team, and we are ready for this divisional round of the playoffs at home at MetLife Stadium, and uh, they beat us. I, I, I don't know. They beat us. They beat us. Unbelievable. This 14-2 unstoppable Giants team was stopped, but of course, we would have to re-sign Rigoberto Sanchez. We wanted to really go with that, uh, that theme of kickers and punters. That know what they're doing. And uh, Rigoberto Sanchez at an 83 overall proves exactly that. TJ Watt is in free agency as is Tech McKinley. Christian McCaffrey, Justin Houston, Tariq Cohen. That is uh, Shaquille Griffin. Forrest Lamp is also a guy that we wanted to look at. Sign him to uh, a decent deal to become a New York Giant. Play offensive line. And we would do exactly that. Signing him to almost $7 million per year. A pretty... Big contract for a guard, but we have the salary cap space. We wanted to bring him in. He's going to slot in very, very well in that offensive line so we can move a couple guys around and really improve that weak spot of our team. Joshua Bush is going to go ahead and slide out to right tackle, I believe. It's possible I could have moved Forrest Lamp to the outside, but yeah, I think Joshua Bush ended up moving to right tackle where uh, he was a little bit more of a natural fit, especially for our team. But it is draft time. We have a third round pick. Of course, we did trade a few to really get our players better. And Willis Gaddis would be the selection. Of course, we didn't take him number one overall. He was in the third round. And a pretty good overall at a 77 out of Florida State for the Seminole there. And that's exactly what we wanted. We took one pick. It was a very solid player. It's a player that actually probably can come in and play right away and help out our football team. 
as he is number two on the depth chart at running back because we only have two running backs and apparently number one on the depth chart at fullback as well but the defense is really the best part of this team you get charles favors up to an 85 86 overall bradley roby at an 87 Jalen mills appeared to be in the 90s the screen i'm looking at is incredibly small so apologies you guys probably can see that way better than i can but we're going to simulate straight to the playoffs and in typical Madden fashion, we do not make the playoffs despite only getting better as a team after going 14-2. and two. Unreal. But as you guys know, a rebuild isn't necessarily about the record in Madden simulation, but it's about the team that you can put together. And in my opinion, this team was fantastic. We had a star running back. We had star receivers. Our quarterback was insane. The offensive line was improving. We had arguably the best defense in football, but that is going to do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As always, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know who you want me to rebuild next down in the comment section below. But guys, take it easy.